All right, we're going to talk about uh, shorting and specifically our process. We're going to go over a few names, of course, but really this is about process. Um, we've had a few clients ask us about uh, shorting in this market, and we've done shorting for five or six years now uh, for a few clients. Um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's our main, our main thing, but we've actually done quite well, which is nice, and maybe we should uh, step it up a bit, especially in this environment, but... We do have a process that we go through, and it's it's pretty robust, and uh, I'm quite pleased with the results. So therefore, that justifies the process. So uh, let's uh, let's jump into it. And first, I got to take you through a few things, um, and just what do companies look like in our um, our model, our software, whatever you want to call it. Um, and we're going to talk about some good companies first. So uh, S and P Global. So we all know the S&P Global. It's the, it's the company that publishes the S&P 500 and a bunch of other indices. And they have software for Wall Street and lots of different data. And uh, at any rate, uh, let's talk a little bit about the company. So you see in the, um, the top bars there, the bar charts, that's the return on invested capital. And you see a 20-year history there, and it's pretty robust, right? I think it's safe to say that's a pretty good rate of return year in, year out, uh, with a couple of dips here and there. In fact, the return is so good, it's off our scale, and our scale, uh, we, we kind of chop it off at 30 so that every company looks the same. So Because most companies are below 30, uh, so we immediately know they're earning over 30% return on their invested capital in, in, our, in our way of calculating, which is cash flow IRR. And done that very consistently for a long period of time. Uh, down below, you see the stock chart. It's been a great stock. And in fact, here's our valuation over here, and it still looks like it's uh, pretty reasonably priced. So that's a good company. We're going to go through, I think, four good companies here. So next one is uh, Intel. Uh, so Intel's 20-year history, again, so the bars on the top of return on invested capital. The one below it is uh, in cap invested capital growth. And you see it's a bit, a bit cyclical, but generally speaking, pretty good. And if you look at the last three or four years, the, the white and then the light blue, that is the return on capital each year, and the, with the blue being the trailing four quarters. And then the, the darker blue is actually the forecast. Okay, So it's been improving for about four years. I love that. I love improving return on investing capital. I cannot emphasize that enough when I'm looking for a good long idea. Uh, and you see the stock has done quite well as well. Okay, So another good company. Uh, here's the next good company, and that's Facebook. And Facebook, uh, let's ignore these first two bars. It was a little funky data there. Let's just say right from here, you know, improving return on capital and putting a ton of capital to work. So you see that capital growth is quite high. So if you're growing your capital and you're able to maintain the return, that's outstanding. Um, we see a little blip down in the return on invested capital, but they've also put in a big... Uh, amount of capital and they are having to go through some things with uh, regulations and and things like that but overall I mean still very good rate of return and the valuation is very reasonable as well so again there's another good company and last good company we'll talk about is uh, B2 gold and I want to show cyclicality <coughs> excuse me uh, cyclicality here and you see when the return on invested capital in the, in the top uh, bar chart there is going higher, so is the stock. And then when the return on capital slides, so does the stock. This is a very common phenomena. It's not perfectly correlated, but this is a good example of how correlated it is. And then in the last few years, return on invested capital has been getting better and better, and the stock's been doing better and better. And uh, we actually have Q1 here, so that's incorporated in the blue bar, the light blue, and we see more improvement in return on capital, and lo and behold, the stock's going up. Okay, so those are what good stocks look like. If we're shorting, you kind of want to flip the equation, although I will say before we even go there, it's not quite as simple. Um, you got to watch out. There's more traps, I'd say. Like, you know, you wouldn't short biotech just because they might have a terrible profile, but they're trying to cure cancer and they don't have any, you know, any revenue at all, maybe. So the cash flow is obviously negative and they're putting in capital. But they might be curing cancer, so you got to be careful 
Uh, same with cyclicals can be difficult. Startups as well. You don't want to get, do too many startups. Um, I don't know what's a good example. Maybe a square, something like that. Um, you know, really hasn't materialized yet. So you got to make sure that's a different. That's a different animal than a company with um, uh, cash flows kind of declining. So we're now we're looking for a declining return on invested capital with our shorts. So let's start off with um, this next. Th these are shorts now. Is this uh, Varex Imaging? So here you see on the top, the return on capital was you know off the chart, and then it's just been sliding down every year since. And the valuation's pretty abysmal as well. So there you go. Uh, we don't like Varex, and lo and behold, by the way, I'm going to show this later on in the in the video, but it's down 30%. I think today at 28, 30, something like that. Uh, that is not a big surprise to me. I I, I wouldn't say I predicted it. Uh, but I'll just say we buy a lot or we short uh, a company with this kind of profile uh, declining return on invested capital and their, and their next quarter comes out and sure enough uh, it's not great because you know we can tell that things are just not good at the company right so it's, it's not a big surprise um, okay next company we have Planet Fitness so Planet Fitness came out gangbusters good rates of return not too bad uh, stock went ballistic, but now the rates of return are really low. And this is before COVID hit, right? Now, people aren't even allowed to go to the gym, so I think they're in trouble. Uh, I, I, and by the way, the valuation, if they just maintain these lousy returns, we don't even have a value there. That's not quite true. Uh, it really just means that the debt holders will end up owning it. That's kind of what that means. Um, I'm trying to be brief, I and mean, we could go into more detail another time. Uh, okay, next we have. Oh, what happened there? Give me one second. A little technical issue here. Uh, yeah, Blue Green Vacations. Okay, so this is a bit longer history. We saw some good returns back in. Uh, I can't have trouble reading my own chart there, but that looks to be, I don't know, late 2000s was okay. And then uh, petered out. Probably two, that's probably 2009, that really low bar there. And then did okay, but it looks like it's starting to peter out again. And by the way, the stock chart is very short because it wasn't public the whole time. It was a private company. So they do state the private uh, company uh, financials and we're able to create these charts. But you see ever since it came IPO, it was kind of highly priced. And then the returns came down as well. I mean, by the way, this is a timeshare kind of uh, company. And I think we've all had, maybe maybe not invested necessarily in a timeshare, but we've heard disaster stories. And this one just happens to be a public company that does timeshares. So makes a lot of sense to me to short that. All right, next one. Uh, Bed Bath & Beyond. Okay, this one I wanted to show a fall from grace because uh, you see early on in the early, early 2000s, it was doing great. You know, and then 2009-ish is when it dipped around, dipped a little bit, the returns were bad stock was dipping and again you see how return on invested capital or our cash flow IRR is very correlated with uh, the stock price movement then it started to improve and the stock improved at the same time and then it just rolled right over and it's all actually all the way down to negative right now and you see the stock just followed that return on capital all the way down you do see that there is looks like there is some value here so maybe be somewhat cognizant of that but that also does assume that the returns kind of return to at least a 5%. Now, that's no guarantee. So, I don't know if I necessarily uh, do Bed Bath & Beyond right now. I would say that they're not they're operating terribly, but perhaps the stock is cheap enough to not um, short, but certainly something we'd consider. Okay, so there's um, some ideas, uh, and we showed it in our quick valuation software, but we also want to talk, you know, a little bit about um, our screening tool and uh, let me just give me one second to open up our screening tool uh, because you know how do you come up with these names and certainly you can we and we do come up with names just by reading and, and conjecture and making some hypotheses and and coming up with coming up with ideas that way um, you know I think uh, a good example we, we're looking at zoom right now as a short in fact it's in our short list it just seems so ridiculously overvalued to me it's not very much cash flow 
at all. In fact, I think it's negative cash flow. I'm not sure if it's negative, but it's very low. And you know, stock's a $44 billion um, stock right now, which seems just ridiculous. Okay, just open up the screening tool. Uh, give me a second here. And why am I frozen? We will fix that in a moment. I do all this stuff on the fly, so it's not always perfectly smooth, but uh, I think here we go. All right, we're back in focus. And let's go to our screening tool now. Okay. So here's our blank screening tool. We just opened it up. Um, we can just go directly to some preset screens and they're organized here. Um, FSA uh, short. So you see where it says FSA short. I hope you can see that on my screen. FSA short, declining cash wire uh, ROE, ROA, and ROIC. And then we got FSA short, fading returns with high PE multiples, fading returns and per share metrics, uh, low cash flow RR, ROE, and declining cash flow RR, et cetera. There's a few different screens. It looks like there's six or seven different screens there. And whatever, I'll just open one of them up. I always kind of like this one here. Seems to get me good results. And we open it up. And it set up all that criteria. I'm not going to go over each and every criteria, but then we hit the screen and it takes a moment to actually get the data. And here we go. I mean, it's, it's processing, you know, quite a big database, 20,000 companies in the database, filtering through them and figuring them all out. What's going to meet this criteria. And uh, sometimes our criteria can be complex. I forget how complex this particular screen is, but, um, Obviously, it's taking a bit of time, but it's okay. That's, I mean, this is moments, really. Well worth, well worth your time if you're going to be shorting. So, ah, there we go. Okay, great. Now we have our data, and we have a whole new list. It found only 49 companies uh, that met that criteria. Awesome. Okay. And, you know, we go through. What I would do, um, I kind of scan through it, and I go, okay, well, let's uh, rank it by market cap. So there it's ranked by market cap. So Honda's the, whoop, I just did it backwards now. Okay, re-rank it from top to bottom. So Honda's the biggest company that met all that criteria, only earning a 3.6% return on capital, not very good. But then I would flip over to our, uh, oh, I don't have my quick valuation open. Uh, I'd flip over to quick valuation, run it in there, and uh, you know make sure, because that's, that's the next level, okay? Um, you can also develop your own screen, whatever you think. Uh, you know, it's pretty simple. You do new. I did a great screen the other day on uh, how to short, and I found a whole bunch of new ideas, which I'm excited about. And basically, you know, we want to find companies with that declining return on invested capital. Maybe I'll just do one really super quick here. Let's make it simple. But sometimes simple is the best. So we want North America, Canada, U.S. Okay, fair. Uh, we want to then pop into general, which is market cap and volume market cap. Let's just say, oh, I don't know, minimum 200 million. Uh, let's go cash flow RR. So we want uh, the change to be uh, getting worse. So we're going to say getting worse. So therefore, the max is zero, the change, right? If it goes from 8 to 10. 8 to 10 is positive change. I don't want that. I want one's going from 10 to 8 the other way. Um, okay, let's do that. Um, and let's look a little bit on the balance sheet. And let's get the book, uh, debt to book equity and the fiscal and market equity uh, greater than 1. So we want it greater than 1, meaning these, these companies are highly levered. Okay? All right, bam, we hit that screen. Let's see what we got. I think we're going to get more. But we know, again, this is a great screen. We know declining return on invested capital is correlated with negative, with, with uh, poor performance. And we know if you're highly levered, sometimes you're in trouble, especially in this kind of market. So there, we have a list. We had 188 companies. Uh, again, let's market, uh, rank it Excuse me, by market cap. And Toyota made that one. Toyota. Uh, Verizon, I'm surprised Verizon's there. Anyway, you start going through this and you start looking at ones that look interesting to you. And I did this just the other day. 
All right. Last but not least, what is our current um, ideas? Actually, let's go back to a one we did in January. So this is a list we published for our clients in January. And a little bit of graphics. There we go. And uh, at the time I refreshed. I'm not sure what data I refreshed. I didn't mark that down. But Children's Place was down 57%. Uh, Sierra Wireless was only down 0.9, et cetera, et cetera. A couple of them did go up. That happens. But let's refresh. So this will be as of uh, May 13th at uh, 3.30. Whatever the prices are, we have the ability to uh, look at it in uh, real time. Actually, 15-minute delay, but don't hold that against me. Um, pretty good. Let, well, let's go. That was a little faster. There we go. Oh man, it's it's yes, it is a very bad day, uh, and that's why I, I remember why I brought up Varex. Varex, I said, was down uh, thirty percent today. It's down thirty two now, and down forty two percent since um, December uh, January. Excuse me. Uh, this whole list on average is down twenty eight percent, whereas the S and P is down fourteen percent um, as of so the same time frame. Okay, so then uh, one last slide here, one last uh, thing to look at. This we just put out yesterday, La after the close, put this short list out. And uh, here's some of the overlap, these orange ones or the, some of the same ones from January. So we don't flip our ideas all that quickly and we were hunting for new ones. So this, this kind of, I don't know, darker green is our brand new ones. And let's update that, you see, for the update, the change was 0% across the board because it was I hadn't updated it yet. And I know it was a bad day. So we're going to see lots of red here, I'm sure. And one more second. I'll read off a couple of names. Amberella, Blue Green Vacations, which I just talked about. Capri Holdings. Oh, man, it is a red day. It is a rough, rough day. Uh, but this list is already down 6.53%. Only one of them is up is Zoom. I really still think Zoom is, is a short. I think it's absolutely carried away. Uh, the S&P is down 2.45, so we're beating it already. That's a nice, I uh, always like to get off to a good start. And we're beating the Russell too. The Russell is down 3.78. We're down 6.53. So for a shorting list, that's excellent. Um, I think that, that's a bit longer than I even wanted it to be, but uh, I tried to keep it short. It's, it's rather. Anyways, it is what it is. The process takes some time, but it's well worth it. It works really, really well. Thanks for watching our investment video. If you want to improve your portfolio returns, simply subscribe. Or if you're an investment advisor or a retail investor and you want help with your portfolio more directly, we can help you with a managed account and manage each and every trade for you.